All right. Pretty, uh, pretty crazy day again today. Uh, and you know, today was actually more enjoyable for me because the action wasn't as psychotic um, as it's been uh, the past few days. You know, when these uh, when these uh, small caps and uh, underbelly names get into this frenzy where the, you know, the options markets explode, there's just way too much action out there. Um, it's just impossible not only to see as it's coming through, but to get a handle on, you know, if you want to do a little digging, dig a little deeper into the flow and, and see uh, what's clean, what's not, you know, because as you're doing that, you can miss... Uh, something obviously actionable and important. Um, so today, don't get me wrong, it, it was really active out there, but uh, the pace was just not as, like I said, not as hectic. Uh, I had, I was able to look at uh, and look into some of the action today, so I felt a lot better about things, but uh, don't get me wrong. I got smoke coming out of my ears right now. It's just, it's amazing you know, there's nobody, nobody knows the real answer, right? Everyone has got their guess and they think they may know, but where all this action is coming from, you know, it's just mind boggling, mind boggling. Um, like for example, today, the action in the wish alone, you know, it's something you would normally see in a name once in a blue moon, you know, or some news or some catalyst or whatever the case may be, right? But there's like 20, 30 names that are as active as a wish was today. You know, CLOV was, has been nuts the past couple of days flow-wise. You know, even stocks that aren't even moving much you know, some of the smaller names, like some of the weed plays and stuff like that. You're talking about hundreds and hundreds of thousands of contracts on the call side trading um, on the day, you know? So like, for example, like a, a wish alone, you know, part of the problem, you guys know this name, every, we're all familiar with this name, um, by now, because what we've been looking for is every time, especially recently here, right? So this was the allure. What the hell is that noise coming from? Uh, this was why we had an interest and we're keeping an eye on Wish, right? You had this bottom here where, you know, again, your downside, can it go lower? Of course, but if it does see the type of action we've been seeing out there, right? like in a CLOV, a CCIV, whatever name they squeeze that particular day, the risk reward, you know, is so worth it, okay? Because especially on the equity side, right? We talk about this all the time. You can almost a day-to-day -day thing, and that's how I played the wish. Um, you know, you, you see action come in at some point in the morning or early afternoon. You get in and... You know, you're hoping to ride that momentum, generate a little bit of a cushion. So if you decide to hold it into the next day for a follow through, you got some wiggle room, right? So the worst case scenario, barring, you know, some news like ride coming out, right? Is you're getting out, giving back some profits, right? So that's the allure, right? The less you're holding on to it, the less risk you're gonna incur. Um, and the problem with Wish was, we would see some sweeper activity. We would see the signs that they were starting to position, but there was never that follow through. The flow never exploded. All right. And, you know, we've been talking about it over the past week that like, if it doesn't happen here, I mean, it's never going to happen, right? It's happening all over the damn map in every name, right? If it doesn't happen here, it's never going to happen. So it's worth keeping a you know a closer eye on it now and taking a shot now if you're ever going to do so. Um, and today they came in, the flow started off the same way. They started sweeping, you know, some of the front month stuff, cheap, nothing crazy. Um, that's where a lot of us got in, 
hoping to see more. And then it finally showed up today and boy, did it ever. Uh, and this thing exploded. Um, but that's, this is what's going on right now. They, to say that there's been a theme out there that where they're focusing on the laggards has been an understatement. Okay. To get a good grasp on things, what's been going on is we've had a rally here that has obviously been going on for a long time. Okay. If anybody's looking for any value now, you have the reopening names, they went ballistic, you know, growth prior to that, they went ballistic. Pockets of the market, SPACs, they went ballistic and popped. So the only place right now with, you know, if the indices are going to have a little tougher time making much headway to the upside um, is going back and looking at names that have been obliterated, right? I mean, this chart is the epitome of what's, ha what's happened in a lot of these names, you know, from the highs to disaster. All right, so while some of the other stuff out there need to breathe and have been breathing, reopening names, industrial names, cyclical names, commodity names, um, they spent their time rather than, you know, just sitting in cash and we're watching nothing see much of any momentum, right? They've been rotating into a lot of these laggards um, and they've just gone bonkers, okay? Uh, the truth of the matter is, it cannot last for any length of time. Okay, it can, but then I think it becomes a problem for the overall market. What we're likely to see is when these things run out of gas, rotation back into some of the reopening cyclical issues, right? That have been going sideways and consolidating or even pulling back, okay? Or we start to see a focus on more quality in the growth space, okay? So in other words, a name like Wish, and I, I don't know much about the company. I know from you guys telling me this thing is a piece of garbage, okay? A name like Wish will pop and then fizzle out, retrace, and be dead money, okay? Uh, but a name like possibly um, a Roku, right? Or uh, some of the software names that have come in, Twilio, or, I mean, Roblox got hot already, but that would be something, maybe a, a B and B. So you understand they're still looking towards growth for opportunities, but they're going into real names, right? They're not going into EV names that as they're buying them, as they're, as they're buying these things, squeezing them, they're coming out with news that they're ready to go belly up, right? So that's, you know, that's what we're, um, I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves here, but that's what we want to pay attention to. Uh, you know, what's the next stage coming out of this, right? Uh, as far as these names are concerned, there's still opportunities in these things. I think we just got to be really careful on some of the stuff that hatched. And what I mean by hatched is, you know, you see a name like this, all right, and you got to try to push it aside and ignore the flow from this point now, okay? The flow doesn't have the edge it had when they were plowing into this thing, you know, earlier. Make sense? Do I have my, uh, hold on a second. Oops. Somebody say something out there, just so I make sure I didn't, I have this in the wrong order. Somebody just write the word. Oh, okay, wait. Oh, I had it. Oh, I know what I did. Thank you. I know what I did. All right. Sorry about that. I just wanted to make sure I had the chat in the right order. Um, so instead of, you know, looking at more upside in the name that already took off, we're kind of looking for the new or the next wish. Okay. Um, and that's, that's kind of, you know, in general terms, uh, the way anyhow, the way I'm looking to approach it here, 
Um, Cause the, the way you get in trouble is not that they can't have, they can't find more upside. I'm sure some of these things will, but when the momentum gets sucked out, as we've seen many times in the past, uh, it can unravel quickly. And if you're chasing a name that already has popped significantly, uh, there's a lot more downside there, obviously, you know, especially if you're playing the equity, um, you got to be careful. You know, you got to be careful. Uh, but we, we, we saw a list of them over the past couple of days. There's been uh, so many of them. All right. And, and here's the beauty of this. We talk about this action all the time when, when it's around, you can be, you can be conservative in nature, right? You could think like, this is not good for the overall market. Okay. You don't really want to be a part of this because you think it's risky shit and it's all musical chairs and it's only a matter of time before it stops. Okay. And still take advantage of it on an intraday basis. You know, you a lot of times you're going to miss these type of moves. Okay. The, the clove that explodes off the open and gaps up the following day. But, you know, I know it's a little different than option, but guys, I, I, I wouldn't lie to you and tell you, you know, if there wasn't, enough room to make money these things on an intraday on an intraday basis you know as far as a risk reward is concerned you, you can't beat it you really can't beat it you know and if yeah that that wish just lined up perfect and and look i'll give you an example like you don't have to tell me this wish was annoying to me too even though it was a fantastic day trade Every time it caught a little bit of action, you know, it always moved. The problem was it never had that extra oomph to it, right? So what would happen, the sweeper activity comes in, you make 40, 50 cents on it, on the equity I'm talking, okay? And then it would fizzle out there, okay? So it was always a decent intraday play. Um, but, you know, the bonus to that, right, is you get lucky – on a day like today where, I mean, look at me, I'm the worst when it comes to holding these things, you know, and I was like diamond hands out there today in this thing, you know, it was, it was easy for me to hold, to be, to be honest, it was easy for me to hold, you know, so, and like this morning too, right? Did any of you guys play the other ones? The problem with these things, the liquidity on the option end, is a pain in the ass. So you that's why a lot of us are playing the equity. You can't be, you can't have the same clear head, you know, because of the liquidity. Um, but, you know, there's so many of these things. Root, oh, I played that lots this morning I played. I think that closed near the highs too. Look at this. Clove and Wish, well, wow, those are, two really nice ones. So you picked the, the two better ones. You know, um, this name, court action today. Wow, look at that late day rip today. Oh my God. It is too many of them, too many of them. Yes, Fastly was a solid trade. Look at that. Look at that. So you catch my drift, you, you know what I mean? Intraday. There's a lot, a hell of a lot less risk. Sometimes you're not going to get, obviously, the same reward, but it's still rewarding enough um, if you're looking to try to take advantage of these things. And sometimes, like, let's say Fastly, right? You play a Fastly, um, and you're playing it intraday. Now you got a little bit of a cushion, and you know what? You say, all right, I'm going to hold it an extra day and see what happens. Maybe I get lucky tomorrow, gaps up. If not... You know, I mean, uh, worst comes to worst, what? I give back some of the, the cushion I had today and, and get out unscathed, you know? Like, that's basically worst case scenario. It's, it's when players really get greedy, they get eaten up alive here, okay? And, and we're going to start to see it. We're, we're at, I wouldn't say we're there yet, but we're approaching... Um, an important point in these things, okay? Because if the if the momentum really starts to build from here on these things, 
that's when like the last go around, you're going to start to hear me, grandpa Jesus over here, start to sound a little bit concerned about the overall market in general. Okay. If you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that sort of thing. So we're, we're not there yet, but if momentum really starts to build from this point, it could become a real, it could become a problem. And we don't, we don't want that. Okay. Cause even though there'll be more money to be made in these things over the short term, you know, it can, it can destroy a market. It can, it can destroy a market. And there's so many different things out there right now that are really set up nicely that if just normal procedure here, these things can run out of gas, chill out. Some of the crap goes further down the toilet bowl and some of the quality, you know, hangs in there and then sees some buying from that point. Um, net, net, that's, that's a lot healthier. That's a lot healthier. And you look across the board, like, look at these names, right? You got all the junk running all over the place. And you got names, you know, that a lot of people would rather own. Yeah, this is this is constructive price action, no? I don't know. To me, this is constructive price action right here. You know, you had the big rip, and now this is just healthy consolidation here. Trying to nail out a bottom. You know, so you got a lot of that going on it, across a number of sectors. So we, we really don't want to ruin that. Um, even if there's more time here, these things need to, to hang out uh, more time. Twitter, the problem with the Twitter flow is I put it in the category with all the other flow we're seeing, Norse. Okay, so... Like the way I look at it is, do I want to, you know, try to play the momentum in Twitter off that action? Or do I rather play a wish or a root or any other name that I know there's going to be momentum off the action? You know what I'm saying? That That's, that's the problem with the Twitter flow. The Twitter flow is just flat out spec action way out of the money, cheap, and, you know, big size like we're seeing everywhere. You know, so that's the problem with the Twitter flow. If you, if you like Twitter, like you would like um, any of these other spec names that we've been playing, right? You think Twitter can start moving here, see momentum, then, you know, that's a different story. But for me, especially I'm, I'm playing the equity in these things, I rather, you know, I rather own the cheaper names that are getting annihilated, you know, and don't usually see this type of action. That's the big difference. You know, for Twitter, like for Twitter, I want to see quality in Twitter. You know, I want to see, I like for Twitter, I either want to see quality in those August strikes or I want to see weeklies. That's Right, I want to see weekly so I know it's going now, and then I'll play a Twitter short term, or if I'm looking to swing it, you know, I want to see better looking action um, in those August strikes. But there's just there's not a lot of that quote unquote quality um, out there right now because everybody's so consumed in this speculative frenzy that's going on. Yeah, that's that's what's the issue here. Like, I, I think today there was one, one sweep where I was like, oh, you know, if I was going to buy something long term, I would buy it. I think it was those leaps in WWE. Yeah, exactly. Like, that was the only, the only name that I said to myself, oh, you know, if I was going to buy something with some time, that'll probably be it. That was the only one. Uh, but again, that's just a, a preference thing for me. You know, but it is spec action. You anytime you see, especially in a larger name like that, when they go that far out of the money, you know, there and it's a common thing that's going on right now, okay? Because volatility is so cheap. A lot of people rather have exposure through the option market than through equity if they need to be involved. 
you know, so they're purposely going out of the money and purposely playing a lot more in a speculative nature um, than they normally would. You know, so that's, I hope that makes sense. But yeah, that's kind of, um, yeah. What did, so what they buy, they bought, well, they bought some, you're talking about the one sweep that was half decent. There was other sweeps. I think they were buying like 30 bucks out of the money or some shit in August, right? Weren't there other sweeps that they, um, in August that they were buying like the, the 80s, the 90s or? No, in Twitter, in Twitter. August 70s were good, August 80s. August 80s and, wait, August 80s? Was there an August 90s? There was something, yeah. Oh, yeah, right? They hit 80s, they hit 100s, they hit a bunch of them. The 70s, yeah, the 70s are more realistic, but how, what do you pay for those 70s? What do you pay? Buck a buck, something like that? Or am I thinking about the wrong line? Yeah, buck and change, right? Again, not bad. I would just put it in the spec category. You know, just speculative with some time. You know, August is a couple months. So speculative with some time. You know, that's that's how I would just uh, approach it. If you like the name, that you know that shouldn't that shouldn't be a problem for you. You know, if you like the setup in the name already, but if you you know if you're trading it off just flow, I wouldn't um, approach it like it was uh, quality flow. That's uh, that's the that's the main difference. Uh, JD, I mean, looks fine. They're they're buying September calls, and there's some shorter dated put buying protecting the short term. 1340. Jesus. You know, of course, you, you're never going to be happy, whatever. I got half my position. I think most of us got half, right? Well, whoever was in the room, we discussed half. What about you guys on private Twitter and all? You're out completely, Pete? You kept it all. What did I see? I got to talk to Pete so he can. Teach me to have a pair of coconuts here. Yeah. Good, good. Huddle, huddle. Might as well. Huddle. Huddle, huddle everything. Huddle. <laughs> no, but also, listen, it's it's luck. You know, from this point, it's luck. You got cushion. So why not take advantage of it? You got some cushion. Um, JD, so... That's the thing with JD. You got some time. You don't have to rush to buy it, in my opinion. You know, you can sit and wait. Um, but there's nothing wrong with, with the flow. The flow is fine. The flow is fine. You know, September buying, nice size. You know, the I told you guys the, the one problem I have with JD. It's a Chinese stock. That's it. That's it. You know? And for good reason, you guys know, you know, these Chinese issues, you got, you just got to understand then they're Chinese issues, you know, there's more risk to them. There's more risk. That's all. But, you know, the flow, JD has performed well off flow in the past. You guys are well aware of that. Uh, stock is, is off a nice pullback here. Supposedly, it's a legitimate company, right, JD, as far as I know? Um, you know, but you got a lot of these Chinese companies that have been seeing action. Uh, they all look good. Just don't buy all of them. Well, I won't buy all of them, you know? They all look good. They all look good. But yeah, JD flow is fine. Yeah, there, there are a lot of names out there that are just sitting right now. And, and you know, the market outside of the Russell, 
I don't think, yeah, I could be wrong, but I don't think this market is going to do anything dramatic. You know, I think it just chops around, sits around, and right, yeah, as we've been saying, all the actions under the hood, right? I mean, I don't even know. Did we finish up or down today? I have no idea. Uh, ES down, NASDAQ up, so flat, right? A flat day, Matt, and look what went on under the hood, right? Insanity. Insanity. So I'll tell you, though, the Russell, which we've been talking about a lot, you know, looks really good. Looks really good. Yeah, exactly. And remember, and remember, we spoke um, chop with a bullish tilt. Yeah, more, more than likely, Norse, but There'll be, there'll be pullbacks that I think we can look to take advantage of, like, um, like we just saw, you know? Like, for example, you know, we get these little jammy jams here. And, you know, I think we can, um, we can look to take advantage of these as far as the indices are concerned, the overall market. Uh, but, you know, to find alpha, we got to look under the hood and we got to look at individual names and the sweeper activity there. Yeah, and I think individual names will be fine. I think even the stuff that, that we see the flow with time, I think the only problem we're going to run into is that there are going to be periods of time where they don't really do much. Like here, here, like this one that I own, right? You had this quick bump up when these things were in play, right? And then now it's got, you know, went dead because now it's all these small caps and NASDAQ growth names that are in play. You know, if they rotate back into these type of names, you'll probably see this thing pop, you know, during that period. So I think you got to, for like swing trades that you're going to hold on to, you know, you're going to have to sit through a lot of pain in the ass. That's the issue. But as we've been saying on the tactical side, that's, there's that T word again. You know, I know people get sick and tired of it because, you know, they don't want to be quick. But, you know, if you want to be quick, there, there are these type of moves, even in these names, that you can look to take advantage of. You know, yeah, Tom Lee, IWM, and, and the oil trade. The oil trade looks unbelievable, no? I mean, at some point here, it's going to run into a breather, I'm sure. It has to. Um, but as these energy names look incredible. They look incredible. Every single one of them. They've looked incredible. Forget about what they look now. They've looked incredible, No. And I hate energy stocks. But you can't deny that they, one, the flow has been perfect in these things. And, you know, the price action, you couldn't draw it up any better. You know, these little mini consolidations, you couldn't draw it up any better. Weekly 9 and 13 on CL, interesting. Because they're, they're, due, they're due for a breather. Yeah, I like that stock. I like that stock, D now. I didn't buy it yet, but I like it. I was going to buy equity. I've been so, uh, you know, tied up with the intraday stuff, but it looks good. CVE, I, I would I would hold on to it, Fish, if it's something you had intentions on holding on to, you know? Because you... That's how you're going to catch big winners. You got to hold and you got to sit through consolidation. If there's no, you know, what we saw post COVID, you know, doesn't always happen that way, obviously. And unfortunately, you know, you're going to have to sit through some of these things to catch big winners. And, you know, the best way to go about that is to roll out in time. So you don't have to stress it, you know, 
Yeah, this this CVE they bombarded. They bombarded. You know, a lot of these things, though. a lot of these things, a lot of these things, you know, from short dated flow uh, to longer term flow, uh, from smaller energy names to the more established Exxon Mobil, BP, Schlumberger, you know, whatever your fancy is in the energy sector, you can find it. PBR, you know. Yes, both. PBR, we see flow constantly in PBR. And EWZ has been catching flow. But, you know, they've moved. Well, you know, um, Alex, I'm sorry, uh, they've moved. You know, so you got you to gotta wait for a little rest now. If you're not in them. If you're in them, you hang on. Yeah, they sneak up on you, right, Matt? They sneak up on you. You know, and, and this is the fun part. You know, we were talking about this a couple of weeks ago. Remember, we were, it was a kind of boring time for me. I don't know about you guys, where I couldn't pay attention to individual names. I couldn't pay attention to the sweeper activity in names. Remember at the start of earnings season, I was crying the blues to you guys. We, you know, play the, we had to play ETS, the indices on dips. You know, let's be honest, that's boring because when you don't get, pullbacks or if they're a rally you're you're kind of waiting around you know now a couple would start a couple weeks ago you know we're seeing the opposite of that where now sweepers you know they're potent yeah yeah we're seeing we're seeing aggressive action in these spec names really aggressive activity in these spec names you know So the question is how long, how long it will last? That's the question. It can't, you know, it's not gonna last. It, there's not gonna be a whole lot of length behind this. If it, if it does, if this is something with some length, there's going to be shakeouts, you know, and breathers along the way. It's only normal. It's only normal. Yeah, that, well, that's the problem, Mosh. You know, that's the problem. Uh, that's, that's why for me, like, I, I need to dumb things down and I try to let the action force me to buy things, you know, rather than come in and do stock picking on my own because I run into that problem a lot. And, and me telling you that, I still do it. I still do it. I missed, which I know quite a few you caught, I missed this, the moving ETWO for no reason than I thought I knew more than the action. Stupidity. And it was sweet, exactly. You know, this, they were bombing. There was no other flow. They weren't even buying anything else across the board. Well, that's the thing. That's what held me back. I didn't know if it was a freaking SPAC. I didn't know if it wasn't. I had no idea, you know, what the hell it was. And even though it was catching all that action, I couldn't pull the trigger. Right. And then the end of the story is Elliot owns 60% of it. I mean, Jesus Christ. Yeah. But that Moshe, don't don't let that get to you, okay? Because if if you don't like playing the spec names, then it shouldn't these moves shouldn't bother you because it's not something you're willing to play. You know, listen. You know, it strikes both ways, right? You're missing the upside now, but there are people who are participating in the upside now who got demolished on the way down, Moshe. You know what I mean? So you can't have it, you know, it comes both ways. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't let it, um, I wouldn't let it bother you too much if you were on the sidelines for this because you don't like these, the, these type of names. You don't like that action. You know, you like the legitimate buying in legitimate names. 
There's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, it takes discipline. You know, it takes discipline. So don't worry about what everybody else is doing. That's one thing, brother. You got to forget what everybody else is doing. It'll drive you nuts and 90% of it's bullshit. You know, you hear all the good stories. You never hear the, well, these days you hear the bad stories. They brag about the bad stories. But you know what I mean? Don't pay attention to what you got to do and that's it. That's the most important thing. But I, I hear you. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, what else? Anybody Anybody see anything? There were so many damn names uh, catching action today. Anybody see anything that maybe is a little under the radar? Oh, I, I played this, but I traded it. AHT. Anybody catch this one? Wow. They bombed it. They bombed this thing. A reet, right? Nice, Paul. Yeah, this uh, so much flow. They bought the living daylights out of it. I thought it was done. I, I didn't think a move like this was coming. You know? I got a little move out of it. That was tickled pink. August seven and a half. Right, right, right. That's the line they bombed, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think somebody um, somebody in the room, was a you fish? Somebody mentioned, I think they bought, I think it was at 60 cents, 50, 60 cents they own them at. And they were, what are they, a buck 70 today? What the hell's wrong with that? No, it wasn't you? Somebody. <laughs> Somebody I was talking to in the room. Um, but yeah, no, nice score. Nice score there. ASTS. Do you guys remember this from earlier in the year? This thing caught action. And look at this. So today was part of the, the shopping spree out there. This is a SPAC, right? Yeah. Look at that move. There were, I mean, there were so many names today, guys. So many names. So many names. You know, we'll see. Um, oh, I got, I got help. Don't think I'm Superman. I got help on the trading side. Otherwise, forget it. It's not even possible. Not even possible. I'm not doing all my trading by myself, trust me. I'm dizzy as it is. Yeah, this is another one to keep an eye on. The options moved a little bit. They started, I think, at 10 cents. Um, I think they were around 30 cents uh, today, maybe even higher. Uh, I think somebody mentioned to me this might be tied to weed. Is this weed? A weed stock or something related to weed? Mushrooms? Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, boy. Okay. LSD. Oh, I can't believe it. Anyway, they were bombing this thing the past two days. Bombed it. Yesterday's action was nuts. I, I traded it yesterday. I don't have any now, though. <laughs> our, our kids' accounts, we're going to have WWE Playboy and drug stocks beat. <laughs> yeah, this thing, Norse, I can't even explain to you how much action this thing caught. Yesterday, nonstop, all day. Nonstop. They were cheap. Like I said, they started buying it at 10 cents. And I, I think I remember them paying up to 25 cents. Um, yesterday, all day. And then today, you could see where the action started to come in again. Right there. You know, so the, the couple webinars, guys, it, it's fitting because this is like, this is the type of action where sweeper activity could be a huge edge. You know what I mean? For day trading purposes. You will be able, if you pull up an intraday chart, 
you can see where sweepers came in instantly. Like there's no doubt, no doubt. You know, like even that SoFi today, they came in in two spurts, right, early. And then I can't believe this late move. And as a matter of fact, I don't have it up here. I don't even look at it because I look at the other. Uh, I don't have, oh, here it is. You can see the volume, you know, swell. In these little guys, you can't hide it. You know, the bigger names, um, you'll see it when there is decent action that comes in. What is it again? M. Oops. And this is like a five minute, one minute will do it even better. You know, you can look, you see this? You can't miss it. Oh, that's down there. You see the volume just swell. Oh, that's half that was. You know, wish you guys were watching the tape on that as the flow was coming in. That was insane. Yeah, you know, volume just swelled. Totally insane. Root, yep. What was the other name I played this morning? There was another name that caught a lot of heat with Root that I day traded in the morning. Lots, that's it. You know, right off the open. Then it went quiet. It went quiet into the afternoon and then a little action late. I think it closed near ties, right? Yep. Lots. Um, this name has seen action, right? The blue fly, a lot of Kathy names. Yeah, lots could have room. Lots could have room. You know, this was another name that I held on to here. Wish did nothing. SDC had a little pop. I think it was like 50 cents I made on it in addition to the day trade. Um, and I got out of it. And then, you know, went quiet. And then today, action again. This definitely could have room too if they stay hot. Butterfly. So, you know, this is what I'm trying to look for. You see this? As opposed to, you know, this already. The LDR. Moshe, there's one I couldn't pull the trigger on. It's been seen buying. The, I don't, I can't say because I traded CCIV, but I hate the EV plays. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. I can't play them. You know, I can't. I know they're garbage. I can't. I can't. You know, they're the garbage of the garbage, but they're going to squeeze, right? I mean, they're going to squeeze. And this VLDR caught a couple nice sweeps. I'm not going to lie. I can't even lie. Ride, look at that. Like you got spec players trying to squeeze that thing and then they file bankruptcy intraday. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yes, AMWL. See, these are the names, Cola, that I like, these. You know, these. I would love to see action in this thing. AI. No, these things didn't do anything yet. Yo, know, I wouldn't say they didn't do anything. They rallied niner to niner here, but nothing like they're capable of doing. You know what I mean? But what we might see, this is where I was started at, you know, the webinar off at, what we might see is 
these things hang out a little bit here, right, at some point, and then the new round of buying is going to come into these type of names, not the Kodak and the EV plays. Can, that's a Bitcoin play though, right? I think that's a Bitcoin. Yeah, I think so. So you're going to have Bitcoin weighing on it. Yeah. Oh, Chinese Bitcoin, nevertheless. You know, there's, there's a lot of, and, you know, we get spoiled by these, you know, crazy pumps out of these names, but you know, for swing trades, the money's made on the on the real names, the quality names like Moshe was talking about. You know, you got a lot, you got a lot of decent setups out there. Yeah, A, B, and B is definitely a candidate. Definitely. You know, all, all these software studs too. Twilio, uh, ZS. DNN is one of these garbage... SPAC pumps, you know, that's catching flow. Yeah, so you could get lucky. You could get lucky. You know, it's a dollar stock. I mean, what's the worst that's going to happen? ZI, haven't looked at that in a while. I mean, we haven't seen much action in this pig. But yeah. This is definitely a type of name, Peter, like I'm, I'm interested in, you know? Definitely. Net. I remember net. Wow, that got hot here a little bit, huh? How about this one, DT? Look it. See DT? Z, ZM moved again? Yeah. Oh, reverse today. Might hang out a little bit here. And you got to pay attention to it, you know? I mean, Cola, the CVE, if you bought it with intentions on holding it longer term, I would roll the calls now. I would roll them out for more time. I wouldn't buy it here. You know what I mean? If you own it already, I would hang on to it. But I, I would wait for a breather um, to buy it. But there, there's, there's so many, man, that look good. This cop looks incredible. You know, all, all these energy names. Apache looks good. I keep forgetting the symbols of some of the other ones that look good. Uh, I can't, my brain is mush. Valero looks good. You know, so you see, like, you got little Niners here in some of these things where they may just, you know, little breathers, depending on what crude does, if crude comes in, which it could. What's crude look like? Let's see. SU looks great. Yeah, so you got a Niner here on the daily and weekly, Stephen was saying, I think or 13 or something. So you, you might, at the least, you might get something like this. See that? All right, a little choppy. And then I would look, you know, see if they get aggressive into a dip. If the flow dries up, maybe they need to uh, digest a bit. I'm hoping anyway, I'm hoping. Yeah, Valero caught nice action. Uh, these energy names, guys, the ones we're talking about, they caught enough action already that you could you watch them on dips. They caught enough action already. We already know that they're buying dips aggressively in these things, you know? Yes, somebody mentioned this symbol. Looks good. No, look at this. All right, so here's the kicker, okay? On top of all this, to, you know, we got a little wrinkle. You have the CPI coming out Thursday. Okay, I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to the macro side of what's been going on here. Okay, but if you remember a few weeks back, we were talking about how everybody and their mother and their uncle's mother, right, was going into higher interest rate plays. 
right? Everybody. Exactly. The Weimar Republic, hyperinflation was on its way. Okay? Remember tech? Sold off. Nobody wanted it. They hated tech and growth. These growth stocks, Kathy Wood was falling out of bed. Okay? Lo and behold, it's, it's, it's unbelievable magically how it happens. Have you guys looked at the, the treasury yields lately? Have you looked at rates? One five. Okay. You're talking about one seven when we were talking about everybody all in on the other side. Lumber. You saw that chart today? Rolled over. All the, those commodities that went parabolic. So that was the catalyst for this. You know, that was the catalyst for this. That's why you see the NASDAQ and the Russell outperforming here. You know, so now you have the CPI coming out, interestingly, on Thursday. And we'll see how they react to a hot CPI or, you know, we're in the same boat that we're in right now. Yeah, and, and let me tell you something else, okay? Paul said from Leopold, who I like a lot, let me show you something. I posted it on my Twitter. Um, I gotta, let me see if I, I, I can find it here quicker. Hold on. You know, everybody is concerned about the Fed tapering, right? Everybody's waiting for the Fed to start to taper and it's already being done. Is this it? Yep. Hold on, this is it. See, that's what I, you know, when I tell you guys that everything you and I are talking about and worried about, the market already ate it, digested it, and is in the process of shitting it out into the toilet bowl. There is nothing you and I are gonna figure out about this game that they, that the, the smarter money already, the market doesn't already know. Nothing. No matter how much work we put into it, how much research, how much effort, there's always going to be players and the market itself with hotter information out there, no matter what. And when you understand that, when you finally get a grasp of that in this game, you start to see the light, okay? So here, right? This is what he put. Many worry what will happen when the Fed Reserve finally begins tapering, quit worrying, tapering, tapering already started for three months. Here's the money supply. You know, and interestingly enough, okay, again, Tapering is not raising rates, right? People wanted to see how the market would react. And, you know, a lot of people were thinking that, you know, very likely the market could just chop around when they start. And, you know, what has the market done? Up, down, a whole lot of chopping around, right? We haven't really gone anywhere. We haven't really gone anywhere. So the, the process, like, you know, everybody's worried about what the Fed is going to do and paying attention to all these economic numbers and everything like that. It's already in the process. It's already, it's already a start. You know, so anyway, I was talking about the CPI. The CPI comes out Thursday. Forget about the actual number itself. We, we pay more attention to the reaction to the number. Uh, and we'll see, you know, a hot CPI, the logical price action to, uh, effect off of that will be all these NASDAQ speculative names will sell off, okay? It will be interesting timing because they'll probably be due for that on Thursday. And you see money start to rotate back into 
these guys again and some of the reopening names and stuff like that. All right. And if you're going to pay attention to anybody out there, as far as on the analyst side, all right, JP Morgan's quant god Kalanovic is calling for that. So he thinks, you know, as everybody swings from one side to the other, oh, high rates, you know, rates, hyperinflation, the market's going to crash. And then the other side is, oh, rates are plummeting. Something may be wrong with growth. Let's go back into NASDAQ. There's the in-between where you're going to get a healthy, gradual increase in rates tied to a healthy reopening of the economy and the rest of the world which is lagging a bit and energy materials reopening names net net are the place to be right they're gonna, there's going to be rotation back and forth and look extreme at times but net net you know the backdrop his feeling is you want to be long of commodities and reopening names off the pullbacks. Right? So all the, all the rest of it's tactical stuff, right? We talk about all that every time. Now, you know, what can easily happen that no one's really talking about is if things really work smoothly, right? If things go ideally, I should say, you get participation from everything. You understand? It doesn't have to be as drastic as we've been seeing where it's one or the other. You get healthy stock picking out there across the board. And that would be like something Moshe likes where you can look for quality names, seeing good looking action at decent spots. You know what I mean? The market's not going to rip. You're going to have chop with a bullish tint to it type of thing. But put your stock picking hat on. 2011. Well, I can't remember yesterday, but I'll take your word for it, right? But I guess similar to 2011. You know? So we'll see. Again, we'll see. You know, we want to see we don't want to get too hung up on a bias. We want to see the action in front of us each and every day. Um, but on the tactical side, you know, this has kind of been our compass, right? Again, we don't want exact buy sells because that's how you can really screw things up and misuse this stuff. But, you know, when, when things get a little too hot, you know, you want to take it easy. Doesn't mean you have to sell what you own. Just means as far as putting on any additional risk or sticking out your neck, you, know, you want to wait, wait for a breather, okay? And when things line up or you, know, you like a strong sector like energy or the banks and they cool off to neutral, you could start looking again. You, you happen to get bullish signals like we've got a couple times on these things, even better. You know, even better. Look at this. That's one we got to have. Now, you know, usually we ignore the action in REITs, right? We can't ignore it anymore. So now, if we happen to get a bullish signal or close to it on REITs, and we see them bombing AHT, you know what I mean? We got to start to take that serious. We got to start to take that serious. But, you know, this was coming into uh, today. All right. And look here, basic materials, right? Poor risk reward. A week and a half ago, whatever. Chill out, relax. See if you can get a better price. It's cooled off. So now you at least got some of that risk, right? You could still be early here, especially if this is going to get down to here. 
but you've taken at least a chunk of risk out of it. You know, and if you happen, you know, even to get close, get close to a solid risk reward out of these things, NRZ, NRZ, I remember that. That's a REIT too, right? NRZ. Yeah, wow. Some healthy moves in these damn things. The only one they're buying too is that Mac. The things had a lift too, though. NRZ with time, yeah. It was a decent sweep. I think I put it on the top bet list that day, right? Right? I'm almost positive. Yep. So, you know, this kind of, again, like a compass. We want to try to use this as a compass and, and find entries, you know? Even on, the, even on the tactical side. You know, if you, if you see something like energy, let's say, that you think you can get in and out of be, without getting caught in a breather, you know, use your judgment if it's a tactical trade. But, you know, swing trades, if you're trading in these groups, you definitely want to, you want to pay attention. You know, you want to pay attention. Um, so right now, coming into today, you know, we looked at this Sunday as well, members, we don't really have anything set up nicely here. We got a lot of neutral, um, you know, and a lot of groups that we like, like the semis, which already have been breathing, right? I think they were down today too, let's see. Eh, just sideways. You know, just sideways. So let it cool off. Let it cool off. You know, let them cool off. I mean, they, a lot of these things had sick runs. Again, the semis are a little tricky as a sector. Jesus, NVIDIA. Um, so the semis are hot. Tech, we have a little more room. We'll see after today if it really makes a dent. Biote biotech, thanks to BIIB, was a nice trade off those uh, Labus. Anybody hit those? I know a couple of you traded them uh, pretty quickly off the lows. XBI. That was a nice spot where the action came in. Labu is the, the play if you want to uh, really... Use your degenerate skills. They really haven't gone anything anywhere crazy yet. Where is it at? Neutral? Jeez. Yeah, biotech, you know, looks interesting. If it can hang around down here, even better. But it looks interesting. Healthcare, you know, was red hot. Look at that. Nice cool off. Nice rinse. Um, mining, this is like FCX and stuff like that. Utilities, big wash out there. Home builders, they, they've been selling off, right? Did they bounce? I haven't really been paying attention with all this uh, spec action. Let's see. What do you guys think of these things? You think it's too long in the tooth, these home builders, or anybody like them? I mean, they've been rallying for a bit. Lumber continues higher. Yeah, maybe they digest. Uh, BBIG, they tattooed this thing. They tattooed this thing. BBIG. Um, you're still holding on? Who mentioned that? You're still holding on to BBIG? Yeah. Already a nice move, too. 
First time five times. Very nice, Pete. Yeah, this thing, they tattooed. They tattooed it. Oops. So housing, maybe it'll digest a little bit more. So you see, we got a couple things getting closer, but nothing, nothing flashing green yet. Yeah, we wish was on another planet today. Another planet. Like, did you? I mean, this wasn't even the le, the the final number. But look at this. This now, uh, is this it? Yeah, yeah, an hour ago. Look, look what they did to this thing today. Four hundred thousand calls, and this was at three thirty. So, add numbers to that. Look at this. You got to be kidding me. Is that nuts or what? Oh God. <laughs> Exactly, exactly, Matt. Like what these market makers, as this action's coming in, what, you know, I can imagine what they're thinking. Like what, I don't understand how they do what they do, right? How do they do what they do? This is just one stock. I'm telling you, we're going to hear something about this action where we find out a little bit more about what's going on here, where it's coming from. I promise you. There's something, there's something crazy. Yeah, all these names, AMC, all of them. There's something very strange going on. Okay. I think we're all over the point that it's freaking Reddit and Robinhood. Are we be are we beyond that now? Can we can we at least clear the deck on that argument? I mean, can we can we end that argument, please? All right? I'm not exactly there. That's their disguise. Exactly. I don't know. I don't know, man. I, that wouldn't shock me one bit, Roy, but we're going to hear about it. And there are already people calling for an investigation into it because it's, it's out of control. And now, you know, it's, it's not even borderline manipulative. It is manipulative, obviously. And you could really, it could have a negative effect on markets. And if they're that stupid to let it go to that point, I mean... I know that's the problem. Who do you rely on looking into it? They they don't look into it until it's too late. That's the problem, right? 2008, things got to blow up before they start doing shit. But there there's something going on. You know what I mean? Somebody's firing the horn. Somebody is organizing this shit. <laughs> Pelosi's husband. But you guys are 100% right. They use, I'm not saying Reddit and Wall Street Bets doesn't, they don't participate. Of course they're participating in it. But this is, this is on the professional side. This is not your average Joe pulling this shit off, okay? No way, no way. And, and that's where you see these big sweeps come in. You know, that time we saw that huge ass GameStop sweep come in before the stock even started moving. You know what I mean? Somebody's firing a horn.
So we're going to hear about it. It's just a matter of when, you know, and hopefully it doesn't get to the point where it affects, you know, other parts of the market because you let them get away with it. It's going to, that's the story of this game. It always happens. Always. You know, we got, we nearly got to that point. The first go around with GameStop, we nearly got to that point, you know, and they pricked it right in the nick of time. Probably purposely so. RKT. Yeah, that'll caught a lot of action too. I day traded it. Not today, the other day. But these are all probably going to be up um, in the morning and then we'll see, you know, you might see a reversal. So be careful, you know, tomorrow. EXPI. Where do I know that name from, EXPI? Oh, it's a software name, I think, or no? Is this a software name? I think I, is this the one I'm thinking of? Oh, no, no, this is not the one I'm thinking of. Yeah. I was looking to see um, if action, some action this CRSR, but yeah, without a doubt, this is picture perfect. I haven't seen any flow in this CRC, uh, CRSR. I thought the other day he caught flow. I always get confused, but they were buying this thing, Casper. Whoa, Jesus Christ. You know, I thought this was the CRSR the other day when they were buying it. No, LH, I've seen uh, sweeps before. Oh, no, wait, LH? I thought it was, yeah, LH is, hold on a second. Isn't LH? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This name has had sweeps before. Laboratory, yeah. I've seen sweeps. Rare in this name, but they've bought it before. Um, the, the There's one more. There's another name I like. Uh, they bought Jan Calls, though. So keep an eye on it. What was that one they bought Jan Calls? I like it even as a, a longer-term uh, swing play from where it is. AGC. This. Caught a Jan bet. Uh, today, first sweep we've ever seen in the name. Um, I, you know, I, I like this just because with time, I think you catch one of these. You know what I mean? And that's 50%. Uh, but if we start to see multiple sweeps, you can, you know, you could play it like wish. You know, so something to I... Um, you know this guy too, right? You guys know who this is? Altimeter, altimeter, however you pronounce it. That's that. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's a spac. I think it's a spac. He gets his hands on all the hot IPOs. Grab, grab, yeah. Exactly. Grab, who else? Um, he took a cut. He's got a, stakes in quite a few names, right, Samir? Roblox. That's the other big one. That's right, Roblox. You know, and he likes a lot of these growth names. I, I think PDD he had an investment in. I think it was that. But anyway, um, he's on Twitter. Oh, okay, cool. So anyway, keep an eye on the flow. You know, if you like it already, uh, it was a decent Jan bet for the name. Like I said, it doesn't catch sweeper activity. So, uh, but otherwise keep an eye on, uh, you know, the action there. If it catches any additional sweeps, especially shorter term ones, um, probably ready. 
SE. Getting ready for new highs again, huh? Son of a gun. Yeah, I got to, uh, Ryan, I got to go, like, similar to yesterday. I posted it a little uh, later. I got to go sifting through all the action. Usually I do it as the day goes on. You know what I mean? We see a good bet. I put it on a list. Uh, but today was a little too hectic on my end. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, what I want to start doing, too, you know, I want to be careful of some of the uh, spec action that has already run. You know, I don't want people to uh, start ch start chasing some of these names. Uh, but I'll throw some of the, the newer names on there and the longer term stuff. Uh, CNW, uh, what is it? C oh, CNHI, I know that stuff. What a beast. That's just a beast. I don't know what you do with it at this point, but that's a beast. Isn't that choo-choo trains? Rails? Construction. Wow, what a move. What a move. Yeah, you know, it's already moved, to say the least. You know what I mean? This, it split? I was gonna say this was, wait, this split, right? Or no? Didn't it split? I think it split. Yeah, it's an ADR. I think it split. I know um, CSX is splitting too. That's a choo-choo train. See, a lot of these things have um, cooled off a little bit, right? You know? A little sideways action. Like you guys brought up the hotels on uh, the Sunday webinar. They all look good. No, they all look good. Look at them. Look at this. That's beautiful. You know, that's beautiful. You had this big rip here. And, you know, this is totally normal. This is what you want. Oh. Looks like it busted out today. Helton. That actually, not too far off highs already. They all look good. They all look good. They could easily, right? They don't. They don't catch a ton of flow. They sometimes like a Marriott. They'll hit hard when they want it. Um, but they could rotate. You know, they can rotate. Let's say maybe off Thursday they rotate. Yeah, A, B, and B is a, a little tricky that stock, but I like it down here too. Yeah, I like it down here too. Yep. So anybody else have any other names before we wrap it up? We got a lot of a lot of things to keep an eye on, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, they had earnings, right? MRVL. The semis, they're already doing it though. You know, they're already doing it. They needed to cool off a little bit and they're already doing it. What about LRCX? The beast. No sellers. No sellers. What an animal. Path. What do they do, Stephen? This is a recent IPO. A match the beast too. Yep. Software path. Yep. Does it trade options yet? Or not yet? Path.
It does. Um, Amad is a monster. Amad is a monster. How about our little uh, baby? She's not little anymore, but LSCC still doing her thing, huh? Yeah, Micron had um, some news today, this morning. But, you know, th this is already in breather. I can't, you see, like, I can't, this is too big of a move. You know, it's tradable here. I just can't get all junked up on it. You know, I, I'm looking at the other side. I'm looking this way. Tilt your head the other way. You know what I mean? I'm looking for the hockey stick down on the ice, not up in the air, high sticking. Five minutes in the box, high sticking. You know, I'm looking for the hockey stick down on the ice. I'm more interested in that here, especially with the market up here, you know? Especially with the market up here. The Islanders look good, but you never know in hockey. It's crazy. Um, you know, if anything, the, the energy names, which are in an uptrend already, but, you know, still have room because of how destroyed they are. Like, look, Cop, right? Looks like it's been rallying over the this year. You just have to scroll your chart back a little bit. And then you can see the real menagerie. You know, so that's why like Tom Lee and Kalanovic like energy so much is because, you know, there's so much room to the upside. These things didn't even, they haven't done anything. Yeah, they're finally breaking out of downtrends, exactly, that they've been in for ages, it seems. Yeah, I just, I'm not a big energy fan, you know, but whatever, they're hot. BNGP, what is that? Energy? Who? B, oh, bingo, yeah, 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 caught a lot of action, biotech. Caught a lot of action. You know, but just, just be careful chasing these moves. You know what I'm saying? Don't overstay your welcome in, in something that's already got hot, right? The gap ups and you can, I'm saying you can ride the momentum. There's no problem with that as they're catching sweeper activity. Just don't get caught sitting here waiting and then all of a sudden they retrace because they need to. Yeah, that's that's why we like the, the ones that are dormant, the ones that are dead, because you know they, they're dead. They haven't gone anywhere yet. You know what I mean? Yeah, especially with the CPI number coming. You know, but if you're playing, if you're in equity, if you're playing the stock, that's you know, just Stop losses. Make sure you, you stick, leave some room, you know, leave some wiggle room, but make sure you have a stop to avoid, you know, when they completely roll over. When they completely roll over. You know, and, and the one thing too, we don't want to get stuck in these. The last thing we want to do is get stuck in these, right? Overstay our welcome. And then we we see them start to some real buying coming into the real names that are set up lovely. Oh, but we'll see how this all shakes out. It's an interesting time, man, to say the least. It's an interesting time. You know, it's an interesting time. Uh, the markets may not even, you know, the actual indices may not even do anything special. You got Sharpies that are uh, hedged, you know? So we may need to be more of stock pickers and, and look for the right spots. 
Yeah, that's good. That's exactly what we needed, John. You know, we needed that here, especially if we're going to chop around, you know? Who? Who's they? Oh. Yeah. Well, like, Kalanovic is bullish, right? And, you know, he's looking for 4,400 tops on on the S&P 500 by the end of the year. They're not that short on... Well, if you look at the... Um, Individual in, in the indices, they're actually slightly long NASDAQ futures. It's the S&P 500, which they've done their hedging. Yeah, and the VIX, right. They're not, they're not buying VIX either. Forget about aggressively. They're not, they're not even buying VIX. They're not buying any volatility. So you know, yeah, exactly. They're probably just looking for chop. Yep. So, what, you know, we want to, listen, we want to be careful anyway, right? Because they're not aggressively long. But, you know, I don't think they're looking for a bomb to go off. And guys, across the board, you know, everything we look at, the Gamma Gang is singing the same tune. You know, everything we look at is saying the same thing, right? Everything. You know, no, nobody's offside really anywhere. The only place they were offside was in this reopening trade. And now even that got rinsed, right? Right. That's the only place where players were all side. They wanted nothing to do with NASDAQ and tech and, you know, all into the reopening trade, higher rate trade. And now that's being unwound as right in front of our eyes. You know, more so in the commodity market too, right? You know, so this is lumber. You had this parabolic move. And now, you know, doing this thing here. Yeah, but that's, Pete, you, you hit the nail on the head. You know, we, we, we never have enough. We want the action. We want to constantly make money. You, you know, pros, they look at exactly what you just said. We nailed the lows, you know, we ate almost all of this. Let's chill out. Right? That's exactly how they should look at it. You know, that greed gets you in trouble eventually. If you're going to be as aggressive as you were here, over here, you know, eventually it's going to bite you in the rear end at some point. Well, well, you know, we'll, we'll pay attention to it anyway, you know, especially if we start to see them starting to sell um, SPX puts and that sort of thing. There's none of that going on right now. If anything, uh, players have been lathered in protection, even as they are bullish. So, but we'll, we'll see after today, if that's changed. I'm more concerned. My biggest concern right now is it's not a concern yet, but as if this whole momentum thing that we're seeing spec appetite gets out of control from here. That I think could really put a dagger into things. Cause you know, that's, they're not going to let that last. That's, that's going to have a, that can have a big effect on things. Exactly. Robert, exactly, right? Especially if they're the potential for more downside or, you know, the upside's not worth it. Right, wish is our thing. If we see wish trade to 30 bucks, right, we know to uh, heat up the bunker. 
get the heat started. <laughs> All right, ladies and gents, as always, thanks for coming by, talking some shop. All right, we'll keep our eyes open. Follow the sweeper activity, especially in new names now. That's what we got to look for. And then Thursday, we got a CPI number to pay attention to. Yep, thanks, guys. I'll see you manana.